So one of the one of the biggest challenges that I had coming in here was the language. When I first arrived here, my English was kind of broken, and uh, it was just enough to get here and be able to go to classes and all of that. But I had a little struggle, like communicating with people, communicating with professors. But throughout the years, I was able to overcome that. And uh, something else that I it challenged me was like just being away from family and not being able to just take a like a three-hour plane and go see them. Because if I had to go to see them, it's like a ten-hour flight and it's like a lot of money as well. Changes were uh, there was <laughs> really hard um, switching from from school from the U.S. and then going to Mexico. That was a huge uh, culture clash. I had to realize that in order to have a social life, I had to go out and look for it and get it. You know, I was at the upper school and it was kind of like the house parents kind of pushing you along and friends kind of forming out of, you know. But here you aren't like forced into friend groups and you're not forced into, you're not sh shepherded into these little groups and so you kind of have to go out there and decide what you want. So it's very different because back home, like first of all, high school is like only a three year instead of four year like it is here. And uh, classes, of course, it was in a different language and uh, people are different. Um, in my high school, it was, uh, we had 3,500 in the morning shift and 3,500 in the night shift. So getting a hold of professors outside of class time, uh, that was a big no-no. Like, if you were to get their uh, personal phone number for some reason and you text them with a question, they'd be like, this is not, this is not professional, you shouldn't be doing this. Um, but here, you can, you can call them, you can email them. They're re really easy to, to reach. I've learned that nothing is perfect. And even as much as someone wants to present a community as wholesome and as great as they want to, a lot of things tend to be romanticized, and Principia is one of them. Principia is a real community. It has its flaws, and it has its great. It has things that are great about it, and also has its flaws. But when presented the idea of Principia, there was too much. It was such a romanticized idea, and I feel like something I've learned is there's no such thing as a perfectly balanced community, and it's kind of taught me to like have my eyes open when I look at, when I get into new places, right? So someone could present something to me as such a great thing, but I'll acknowledge the, go the good in wherever I go, but I'm going to be very aware of things that aren't as great as they could be and see where I fit in and trying to make a change or at least make it more comfortable for anyone else who, who would come into that community. So that's what I've learned. Hi everyone, and welcome to PCTV. I'm Hunter Hummel, and today we're going to have a casual conversation with a very special guest. Um, oh, shoot. Oh, I'm waiting for him too. Principia College President. That's who, <laughs> that's what it is. Okay, <laughs> that'll be a great blooper though. <laughs> Hi everyone, and welcome to PCTV. My name is Hunter Hummel, and today we have a very special guest. Principia College President, John Williams. Thank you so much for coming out. And who are you? Uh, I'm, I'm Hunter Hummel, and welcome to PCTV. So just while we begin, just to get all the awkwardness out of the air, I think it's important what we should call you. And by we, I mean the students. Should we call you Mr. Williams, President Williams, Mr. President Williams, John, Johnny Boy? What would, what would you prefer? Okay. Hunter, you can call me John, but okay. you better do it respectfully, please. Great. We'll call you John. All right. Well, President Williams is more respectful, particularly if I don't know who someone is and they just call me, call me John. But that's my name. Great. And as long as it's done respectfully. But um, if you're not respectful, I don't have to respect you either. Okay. Hunter? Yes. And then, I mean, I go by a lot of names, Mr. Hummel, um, that student, Hunter Hummel. But moving on a little bit, you are quite the international adventurer. I've been lucky enough to accompany you on one of those journeys. Actually, I accompanied you. Let's be, let's be honest. Yeah, so you accompanied me. And it wasn't just you. Yes, other students, not as important. But 
I've always heard the rumors that whenever you go on a trip with John, especially internationally, you start one place and you never know where you're going to end up. How did somebody like you end up on Mongolian national TV? Hunter, that was the time on the print abroad that we were there during a presidential election year, an election race. And we were there at one of the rallies and no one could figure out who all these Americans were. And so they came over to start interviewing us and it turned out to be a, a TV crew from the Mongolian National TV Network. I was thinking, you know, maybe you were like a, a soap opera in Mongolia or something, but that is much more realistic um, and just as exciting. Um, well, we, on another print abroad, one of my basketball players, one of our varsity basketball players, uh, tried out for and was invited to join one of the professional uh, Mongolian professional basketball teams. But I, he can say that he was recruited by an NBA team. Mongolian basketball team. That's, that's amazing. Not everybody knows that you have your own temple or church. Um, could you give us a little insight into Temple Williams? Well, that's strange. My wife calls it my man cave. I prefer to call it John Smithsonian Institution. And our CE, Dennis Marundi, who I was able to show the other day, calls it the Williams Museum of Global Understanding. It's a, a former Episcopal church. And in 1999, my first wife, Judy, and I bought it so that a developer would not destroy it. And it has become the repository for all of our travels, all the things I collect. Uh, my family were diplomats. I grew up in India and in Thailand. And so as family historian, I've got lots of collections. Is there, is there one item in specific that you, you value the most or you think is the, the coolest? Are you trying to get me to tell a story about one of them? No, I mean, okay. I just am curious. I don't really know. I've never been. I don't know what's in them. You've never been? No, I don't. And I don't think a lot of students have been. Wow. We should do like a, a like buy a ticket. And you get to like go through. You Maybe. know, do like no, a museum no, no. Day. I just have you all buy cans of canned goods, and we as, that would be your admissions gift, and then we'd give them to the local food bank. That's we used to idea. do that a lot during the Christmas season. Um, I've had the privilege of bringing back. Uh, sets of Guru Granth, Granth Sahib, the, the holy book, of, and the impersonal pastor of the Sikh religion. Um, prayer rugs, certainly. Wow. When you travel a lot and you go back and use the same contractors, they, of course, give you little gifts. And they asked me in China, and I said, I want a Chinese bicycle. And they said, that's absurd. Why don't you go to Walmart and buy one? No, I want a Chinese. Well, buy a Schwinn. That's what they were making. No, I want an old flying pigeon or a phoenix, the historic ones. Why? Because I want the students to be able to touch and feel and experience the mode of transportation that built China and carried millions of people through the Cultural Revolution. And so the sponsors bought me one and I came back to the dormitory and there it was, $40 worth of bicycle. Wow. Which I mean, is, I'd be excited to go, go see that. Maybe take it for a ride or something. Um, I, I doubt you would let me do that. So moving on a little bit, uh, there's been a lot of rumors. Um, that you're, you're not living in Hutchinson House because you opted to live at your house in Jersey, um, Jersey Vale, just that's not the state, <laughs> the, the township, <laughs> very different, um, in Jersey Vale. That being said, uh, I myself am looking for a rent-free bachelor pad. Um, do you have any plans with Hutchinson House? I was planning to rent it out. Would you like my application? You said rent-free. Okay, I'll get back to you. <laughs> get I got to me. Get some donors. Oh, I got you. If it costs money, you got to go do it. Um, you know, in Greece, they call them the mooch. <laughs> Is there anything you'd like to be, bring back to Principia College that maybe you saw while you were either a professor or one of the students? I would be open to rethinking how we might structure and get back to calling upper classes uh, to their responsibility to help mentor younger students. So I put that out to the upper, those in the upper class to serve as mentors to new students. I mean, I think that would be a great thing to bring back. I know I would have appreciated that, especially, you know, coming into it. Um, and you probably would have needed it, but yeah. <laughs> um, before we wrap up and before you do a little ending, um, is there anything that you would like to tell Principia College students? I love you. No, I, I do. Um, you don't have to appreciate me, but do appreciate those on this campus that go unappreciated.
right now I'm thinking mostly of uh, the facilities, the house cleaners, those that those folks know more about what's going in the dorms than I could ever imagine. And I've given them the permission to help support you all, to guide you, to, to step out of their roles. I've given them permissions to hug you. I know it's COVID. And to spank you and to call you accountable for behaviors. Yeah. Well, those are just a few messages. Well, I mean, I appreciate that. Um, that being said, I think that's all the questions I have. And I appreciate you coming that being here said, today. Do you clean your own bathrooms? Uh, I do not clean my own bathrooms. <laughs> you better appreciate the people that do those work. Yes, and I definitely do. Do you repair the plumbing? Do you make sure the electricity is working? I have a hard time doing my laundry. <laughs> 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 Something I'm working on. But again, thank you so much for coming out and giving us your time. I really appreciate it, and uh, we're very grateful for that. Hunter, thank you.